Hi, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna take a look at a new project that I've been working on, which is a procedural city generator built in Unity, which uses small modular 3D buildings, Perlin noise, and grid-based spawning to create something which I think is pretty cool. What I'm gonna do is give you guys an overview in this video, and then I'll break out some separate, smaller, standalone videos on the channel where we dive into a couple of the concepts that we've shown. Let's check it out. In this video, we're gonna start up a little mini series that I wanna call Imaginary Cities. And so we're gonna be doing some procedural content generation, generating cities procedurally in Unity. So if we enter play mode here, we have our empty scene, and if we push the space bar, it'll generate this small city landscape that has blocks with gaps between blocks and these kind of random buildings. This is using some 3D art assets from Kenny, AKA Asset Jesus. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the description below. He's a great content creator who creates free assets for game developers. I highly encourage you to check him out and support him. I've also put in a little mouse look kind of script here where we can fly around by pressing left shift. And then if we push the space bar, we can regenerate, right? So this is using a mix of a grid-based spawning technique and then what's called Perlin noise. So we're gonna take a look at how that Perlin noise is implemented and used in a later video. But in this case, this is what's giving us the shape here. And you can see here, this is the actual texture that's being used. So the brighter parts correspond to higher parts of our kind of building landscape and the darker parts are lower ones. Now what we can do is we can adjust the scale with this slider of the Perlin noise and we can see now we're kind of zooming out on this noise field and we can see that it's affecting our buildings differently. We can get a couple different results by pressing the space bar and we see an offset portion of this noise field. So we're kind of zooming around in the noise field, sampling different parts of it, a random one each time we press space. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit further and what you'll see as we start to zoom out is that we start to get these less smooth, more kind of random looking patterns, right? If we zoom it out a little bit more. And I find there's a lot of nice little sweet spots in here. This is kind of cool. We're getting some higher formations, but we still have these weird kind of ziggurats. This I kind of like, right? And this is what kind of the fun of procedural generation is, right? You make a generator with some controls and then you can kind of play around and this could be cool, right? We could have different settings for different parts of a map or different level types, right? Let's zoom out some more. And we can see, right, we're starting to get some different results. Let's do a bigger jump. And what we can see now, as we get quite zoomed out on the noise texture here, is that things are getting quite erratic, right? Let's fly around a little bit. So we can see, right, this is pretty noisy looking. It's also starting to look a bit more like a real city or at least certain types of cities. For example, New York, where I grew up, this is kind of, why I'm always making procedural cities. I just somehow I'm trying to recapture the magic of the city that I grew up in. Let's max it out. We can see that we get this pretty much random, right? Now this is where a lot of procedural city generators will start, right? Is just pick random buildings, random building heights and spawn them around. And this does generate a nice result, right? But what you see is that with this Perlin based approach, we actually can get this just by taking a very zoomed out sample of the noise, uh, but we can also go down and get some of these kind of more subtle, I really like these, they're just weird, kind of rooftop landscape. If you go really low, I also like the way this looks. This also looks a little bit potentially, I don't know, realistic if is the word, but human-like in a way that I think is kind of cool. So there's a few different things that we've got working here. We have our noise system, which has this Perlin generator script where we're setting a texture size. We're choosing whether or not we want to randomize the noise offset. This is the Perlin offset that we can enter manually if we want to. This is the noise scale that we were adjusting with the slider. We have just a reference to a UI image, which is this that we're using to visualize. It's not needed if you're not visualizing it. Now, this is kind of interesting. We have this Perlin grid size. Let's take a look at this. So the buildings are looking at the Perlin noise grid and deciding how many chunks to add to their stack, right? How high should they be? 
And they're doing that by kind of comparing their world space position to this Perlin noise texture. And we'll look at how that's done in a separate video. I'm gonna go in depth, but just to kind of lay out the concepts for you here. Now we also have this little tool that I made that allows us to visualize the grid. This allows us to just see the raw topology that's being generated. And this is actually the resolution that we're sampling the grid at, right? So we're sort of quantizing the Perlin noise into a, in this case, I think it's a 40 by 40 array. And of course we can use the same approach. Now here, we're not filling in the bottom, right? This is just one layer of cubes. So as we get higher, we kind of lose coherency. But you could see, right, we could head off into Minecraft territory pretty quickly. Obviously we'd wanna use voxels instead of just floating cubes for that. But, you know, we can start to generate some pretty, pretty cool data that we could use for all kinds of things here, right? So I'm using this for a, uh, a city generator, but of course we could use this kind of Perlin data to generate 3D shapes or these kind of more smooth kind of terrain type shapes. And actually, if you've ever worked with Unity's terrain, this is a very similar approach, right? This is basically, the terrain is a height map based approach where it's looking at a black and white texture and setting the vertices of the mesh to a certain height. That's basically what I'm doing here just with cubes. That is uh, included in our Perlin generator script, which we'll look at in another video. And then the other piece that we're doing here is we're basically spawning a grid, right? Good old spawning a grid that I apparently love to do. We've made several videos that utilize this approach on the channel and here we are again, spawning a grid again. And so what we're doing here is we have, basically it's nested grids. So we have this grid that's laying out the city blocks, right? I think this is pretty important for first of all, making it feel like a real city and second, making it a kind of a playable space, right? If we ever wanted to use this for a game, we need some some streets or some some areas for the player to navigate in, right? So, so they're spawning these building cluster prefabs. So if we set our grid to one by one and regenerate, we can see here, here's one of our buildings, right? Or one of our building clusters more appropriately. And so what this is, this is just an eight by eight group of these Perlin buildings. And actually if we make this just one by one, it's here is a single, building, right? This is what we're doing. And so the building itself has a bottom, an indeterminate number of middle pieces, which is based in this case on sampling the Perlin noise, how many pieces it has total. They never go less than three. It's either none or three. It has a base, some number of middle pieces, and then a top, right? And so if we, some of that one was a little weird. I love it when they get these little air conditioners on top. So we're spawning lots of these buildings, sticking them together into a grid, and then using that to generate our city, which in the end looks like this, right? And for one of the things I was thinking about doing with this, especially with the free fly camera, right? It's kind of fun to just zoom down in here. I feel like this could be a cool thing for like a, a photo taking game maybe. Obviously not all of these are good, right? I was playing with that depth of field on the post-processing stack. If we go into the street, we get a more reliable position. So maybe add like a screenshot taking mode, maybe add some kind of time of day mechanic. Could be a fun thing. It's pretty fast to generate. We could definitely make it faster. This is almost completely unoptimized but I think it's a good start. This is our kind of overview. And then what we're gonna do in some of the upcoming videos on the channel is we're gonna break down each of these systems one by one. I'm not gonna do it as like a connected series. I'll try to address them in isolation, but this is the kind of overall thing that we're gonna, we're gonna look at how to create. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you guys found that fun. I had a ton of fun making it and I'll be releasing a couple of videos over the next coming weeks, looking at the modular building generation, how I implemented the Perlin noise and a video on just kind of how everything came together. So make sure you're subscribed. Drop me a comment down below if you have any questions and I will see you guys next time.